marriage, celibacy, the spontaneous way of life. Why do I call this series as marriage transcendence beyond? Man is as such as he is, he is mind. Mind is the seat of ego. Mind is the seat of memory. Mind is the seat of intellect. Individual ego is difficult to subjugate and to create a balance between mind, intellect, memory and ego sense is difficult. In marriage, two people with different set of minds, intellect, memory and ego sense come together. When two people are going through a supermarket, I take this example again and again because it is like going through a marketplace where there are many things and the light falls on that. These things create an attraction in your mind. Each reacts differently. When a woman goes through the supermarket, her eyes fall on things according to her own frame of mind. She may go for items differently than that of the man. Their way of thinking is different than that of man. When these two people come together, there is a clash of ego and to establish the harmony between the two is the way. And when they interact with one another as a spouse, the physical territory is explored. The life begins with the attraction for the physical. Physical territory is explored. There is nothing more to explore because we do not think there is anything more than the physical being to explore in a man or a woman. There are many realms. The physical body is very easy to explore. Then along with that the emotional, to understand the emotional state of the spouse is difficult. And then his level of thinking and his spiritual aspect is difficult. That is why I call this entire series as marriage. Celibacy is the natural and spontaneous way not by force or violence. Unless you understand the essence of celibacy as the spontaneous way to life, you will go on missing life. You will miss the blessedness of male-female relation and with this you will miss the transcendence as well. Celibacy can only be spontaneous and nothing else. Celibacy can only be spontaneous and nothing else. There is no other way. If celibacy is not spontaneous, it is not celibacy. You can force it, you can control your sexuality, but that will not help in any way. Instead, it will gain more force and it will spring forth with greater intensity. If your celibacy is not spontaneous, then you will be only more and more sexual. Sex will spread all over your being and it will be very difficult to understand it. It will become part of your unconscious. It will move to your dreams. Sex will become your motivation in dreams and your fantasy as well. It will be part of your dreams. In fact, you will become more sexual than you ever were before. You will think about it more and more 
and you will have to repress it again and again and this is life what goes on all around us and whatsoever is repressed has to be repressed again because victory is never complete through repression there is no way to destroy sex by force and by violence there is no way to control it and discipline it people who have tried to control and discipline it find it impossible for the impossible and they are responsible for the world of pornography your so called saints have a very pornographic mind if a window can be created and a hole can be made in their heads you will be able to see just sex and pornography and nothing else it is bound to be so it is natural never before never enforce any kind of celibacy on you try to understand what sexuality is go meditatively deep into it it has a tremendous beauty of its own it is one of the profoundest mysteries that life has given life comes out of it it has a great mystery sex is not sin as has been conceived and propagated repression is sin sex is very natural spontaneous you have not done anything to attain it it is in born and part of your being never condemn it judge it or be afraid of it never fight with it be aware of it and that is all you can do the rest happens on its own in that awareness alone lies the seed of transcendence when you accept it and you are entering into it meditatively this transcendence is possible let it happen in such silence in such deep acceptance that you know the very core of it the moment you penetrate to the very core of sexual orgasm you will find sex begins to lose its appeal for you and then your energy will start moving in a higher plane as the energy moves to the higher plane you are becoming more and more loving and less sexual and this happens naturally and spontaneously try to force celibacy upon yourself and your dreams will become sexual they will have a quality of sexuality in it people who try to control themselves have chosen a very foolish way because they do not know any other way to transcend beyond this control will not happen they will become more cold controlling is the only way man has known so far thus energy becomes so frozen that it does not arise in order for the water to become vapors the snow has to melt it has to begin flowing first and then and only then it can become vapors this is the thus the energy becomes so frozen that it does not arise this is known as celibacy people who take the vows of celibacy will not eat much they will starve their bodies and do all kind of unnatural things which they think is the way they are afraid if more energy is created in the body then there will be more more and more sexual energy and then they will not know what to do with it they have not learned the art of channelizing it into other directions 
they only know one channel for this energy to flow also they do not know how to channel this existential energy more creatively so buddhist monks eat once a day and that do not enough they eat just enough to fulfill the needs of the body just bare minimum needs and so no energy is left this is not celibacy when you are flowing with energy and energy starts transforming itself into love then celibacy becomes possible and the actual word the hindi word for celibacy is brahmacharya it comes from two words brahm the absolute consciousness and charya one who dwells in absolute consciousness is known as brahmacharya but the english word is transcendence actual word is brahmacharya one who constantly dwells in ever expanding consciousness or one who is guided by the consciousness and its various aspects i have come across people who think that without long fasting there is no possibility of meditation now fasting has nothing to do with meditation fasting will make you more obsessed with food after fast people eat more fast is incorrect word the actual word comes from a sanskrit root called upvas it comes from two words up means close and vas means to dwell thus the word implies to dwell near during the fasting you create you recite scriptures etc and because of this you dwell in a different company therefore you you completely forget about food you would notice that sometimes when you are so absorbed in your work that you forget about food this is natural and spontaneous fasting not that you are forcing on to yourself you are so lost into your work but when you are so lost in the remembrance of of the lord remembrance of your beloved that you forget all about food however there is there are people who think celibacy will help them into meditation meditation in fact brings a kind of celibacy because why does one go into sex because he feels something missing within him and meditation first creates that gap gives makes you aware of that gap and then gives you tremendous fulfillment therefore meditation brings a kind of celibacy and vice versa is not true that when people go into meditation a state of mind comes but when you study the state of mind and try to bring the meditation it does not happen so meditation brings a kind of celibacy but vice versa is not true celibacy without meditation is nothing but sexual repression and your mind will become more and more sexual so whenever you sit to meditate your mind will become full of sexual fantasies these two things have been the greatest problem for so called meditators when they sit down in meditation more and more sexual thought comes to the mind the problem for the so called meditators is fasting and celibacy we think these two things are going to help however in reality they 
are the greatest disturbance. In meditation you explore within. Meditation is the journey into aloneness while in sex you need the other. That is why through the togetherness you can experience aloneness and through aloneness you can experience all oneness. We are all part of one synergistic harmony. Eat in right proportion. Buddha, Buddha calls this the middle way. Neither too much nor too little. Buddha is against fasting and he knows it through the hard experience because he went into intense fasting. For six months he was told that fasting is the way to attain to spirituality. He went into so much intense fasting that he lived on one grain of rice for six months. He became free, weak. Then a thought came to his mind, even if enlightenment happens, his body will not be able to sustain. He was so weak that he could not cross the Niranjana river, the river that is stony and very shallow. He was trying to cross that river that night and he fell on the ground. He fell in the river. Somehow he held on to the branch of the tree that was leaning from the other side and he kept on watching the stars disappear one by one. Something happened then. Buddha calls it the middle way, neither too much nor too little. Buddha is against fasting and he knows it through the hard experience. For six years he fasted and could not attain to anything. For six months he remained on one grain of rice. Buddha is speaking out of his own experience. So when he says be in the middle, he means it. This applies about celibacy as well. Anything that you do, be in the middle, moderate, neither too much nor too little. Sleep in moderation, neither too much nor too less. Eat in moderation, never enforce anything upon you. Just allow it to happen spontaneously. And once something happens spontaneously, it has a beauty of its own. Indeed, celibacy is the byproduct of meditation. Hence, it cannot be enforced before meditation. When meditation attains fruition, celibacy happens. Be in the middle. There, there too, neither too much indulgence nor too little. Just keep a balance. A balanced person will be healthier, at ease and at home. And when you are at home, meditation becomes easier. What then is meditation? Just sitting silently and doing nothing. Witnessing whatsoever is happening all around and just watching it with no prejudice, no judgment, no conclusion, no idea what is right, what is wrong. This state is meditativeness. You can sit down with your eyes closed or you continue to move through the world of objects and beings in duality and yet still you be meditating. You are walking in the office amidst the people, you are walking on the street, but if your approach is just sitting and just doing nothing, witnessing whatsoever is happening around you. You are not meddling into the affairs of others. Two people are talking and we are we unnecessarily involve into the conversation because this is what the mind likes. Let me hear what these people are talking about. What they are arguing let me go into. That is none of my concern. I am simply watching these. And this is what said. When Hazrat Pagambar Wasallam came from the Mirat, the, from the, the communion with Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, 
he saw the people were engaged in the kind of arguments and things like these he did not involve into it he remained a witness to it in the name of celibacy sex has been repressed for centuries and you have become just full of sexuality rather than transcending it you are boiling within remember there are two types of celibates first who has simply forced celibacy upon himself is the wrong type this is violence against oneself the other who has tried to understand sexuality what it is why it is and who has watched observed and lived through it and by and by he has become aware of its futility and by and by he has become aware of deep frustration that comes after each sexual act remember this always in sexual act you have a certain thrill a moment of forgetfulness and a moment of oblivion you feel good for a few seconds only for a few seconds you drop out of this routine world sex gives you a door to escape into some other world which is non tense there is no worry you are simply relax and melting but have you observed after each sexual act you feel frustrated sex has promised too much but it never delivers it is difficult to find a man or a woman who does not feel somewhat frustrated after the sexual act and guilty as well i am not talking about guilt that priests have imposed upon you about sex even if nobody has imposed any guilt upon you you will feel some traces of it this is the shadow of the sexual act you have lost energy you feel depleted and nothing has been gained the gain is not very substantial you have been befooled and tricked by a natural hypnosis you have been tricked by the body you have been deceived hence each sex act brings frustration that is why the real awareness always leads you beyond sex you are not against it you have understood the very nature and in that very understanding the awareness dawns and celibacy becomes spontaneous and happens on its own accord to be in sex you have either to be identified with male or female a real celibate is one who has gone beyond he is neither male nor female he is either beyond or he is too that is why shiva is depicted as the symbol of transcendence and this he is half male half female known as ard means half nari means female ard nari shiva he is a symbol of half male half female and remember you are born as half male half female half ovum half sperm out of the interaction of the two the human body is formed the x chromosomes and y chromosomes a little imbalance between the two creates the male and female celibacy as has been propagated is it one of the most unnatural thing it has destroyed millions of human beings millions of catholic monks hindu monks buddhist monks jain monks and nuns have all been destroyed 
For centuries they have been teaching celibacy and the most amazing thing is even in the 20th century not a single medical expert psychologist has stood up and said that that is celibacy is impossible the very nature of things is such that it cannot happen to impose celibacy means to pervert the sexual energy of the person it is celibacy that has created homosexuality it is celibacy that has created sodomy perhaps you do not understand the word sodomy sodomy implies making love to animals and finally it is celibacy that has brought humanity to experience the great joy of aids indeed aids is a religious disease it has been created by all the religions nobody has ever been celibate whosoever are they are simply pretentious you can only be a hypocrite but your sexual energy will find a way to move it is natural so never impose celibacy on you just try to understand and remember in male female relation it is easy to go beyond celibacy very easy to go beyond you are interacting with the other a different kind of a territory different mind different framework different memory sense because each when interacts into the world of objects and beings gathers impressions and the impressions gathered by two people looking at the same circumstances and situations always differ from one another so in religious terminology this is known as karmas you are born with your impressions your spouse is born with her impressions and each has to attain fulfillment it is you who can help your spouse to fulfill those impressions to go beyond those impressions and it is the responsibility of your spouse to let you go beyond those impressions and in that very understanding the real celibacy happens real celibacy happens only then